Striped bass are by far the most sought after sport fish on the vineyard. The migratory species typically arrives in local waters by early May, hot on the heels of squid and herring, and departs for southern areas in late fall. However, it appears that at least some of these bass are prolonging their island vacation. A new study initiated by the Wampanoag tribe of Gayhead Aquina is trying to learn if adult striped bass are spending their winters in Menemsha and Squibnocket ponds, where they lay in wait for returning river herring seeking to spawn in the early spring. Normally, the stripers would arrive after the herring have had a chance to spawn, but it may be that these so-called winter-over bass are devouring the herring before they can procreate, endangering the population of these environmentally and culturally important fish. To find out more, I met up with a team led by Brett Stearns, director of the tribe's natural resources department. Brett had recruited the help of the Marine Biological Laboratory of Woods Hole to tag some of the local striped bass and see if the fish were indeed lingering in the ponds throughout the winter. Today we're doing our best to catch some striped bass in the Herring Creek, which is on tribal trust land of the Wampanoag tribe of Gayhetaquina. And um, the reason why we're trying to catch striped bass is because we believe that we have a year-round population here and um, it may be impacting our herring population which is the real the initial goal that we had here was to identify how many herring we had coming back onto tribal property and, and uh, into Squibnocket Pond each year. We've done that successfully over eight years. We've captured video imagery and we have actual counts of the herring and that brought us to the understanding that we have these striped bass here perhaps for longer than we had thought. In the fall of 2023, Brett's team and staff from the Marine Biological Laboratory of Woods Hole successfully implanted 20 stripers with acoustic tags that allowed them to monitor the fish's movements via receivers positioned around Menemsha and Squibnocket ponds. Data showed that 19 of the 20 stripers remained in the area through the winter, confirming what the researchers had suspected. As soon as we um, implant a tag in an individual striped bass, that bass will give off a signal picked up by the acoustic receivers. And then once we pull those acoustic receivers and download the data, we can tell which individual fish was near which acoustic receiver. And that way we could establish um, general movements during the season, uh, where these animals were hanging out in the, uh, in the non-summer months, what their behaviors were, and how that might affect their predation and the population of herring that they have here. So how many stripers spend the winter in the ponds? Last year, at least 125 fish were counted on underwater video cameras prior to the arrival of any migratory bass. But it's suspected that the actual number of overwintering stripers could be as high as 300. It's important to note that stripers have probably overwintered in the salt ponds since the ice age. So it's not fair to blame them for the decline in the local herring population. It's more likely that commercial fishing pressure in the form of midwater trawling, as well as the vagaries of climate change, are having a much larger impact. So what's next for the tagging study? Both the Aquina tribe and Woods Hole researchers will continue to tag fish and monitor their movements using a greater number of receivers. Ultimately, they will try to learn why the bass are overwintering in the ponds, at what depth they are holding, and if they might be spawning there in the spring. Stay tuned.